So we've got our source packages in that directory. And let's just do a long listing, make sure I haven't left any directories lying around. No. And we've also got the static directory, which is where all of the programs we built in the previous video reside. So I think we can carry on now. So yes, yeah, just contents. So introduction. So again, this is pretty standard to what you know if you've done modern Linux and scratches. Um, debugging sy symbols. Now, when I was testing this, I didn't actually do this because I didn't want to destroy or potentially destroy everything that I've done. Sometimes this fails, and I've a feeling it's because I've done something a little bit different. I've got um, a program maybe I've installed somewhere else or something I've done that's not quite the same as the book and that's why this fails for me sometimes so what I was going to do but I forgot all about it was to build up the system completely get it working back it up and then run the strip but I may not even bother doing it on the video to be quite honest but it's there if you do want to try it yourself um, back up your partition and try it out um, so we've got a truth uh, command here to, to enter the truth environment. So let's put that in. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning is I have no name. It doesn't actually dis it, well, it disappears um, at some point after I install bash, which is quite a long way in. Um, and I didn't remember when at another point it reappeared and it seems like there's some settings or something that's not quite set up right or something I've done. I can't remember what it was now. Um, I did look at it a little bit more, but it does eventually get resolved in the final system. Um, yeah, I can't... I can't remember off the top of my head what finally fixed it, but it was in the final system that I actually managed to get it fixed. Oh, I know what it was. Um, well, initially, I don't know why it doesn't disappear, but ultimately, because the boot scripts for Linux from Scratch aren't, um, Linux from Scratch 4.0 aren't available, I used the boot script from 5.1. So now, obviously, the instructions for 4.0 um, are not built around the boot scripts for. Um, Linux from Scratch 5.0. Um, so there's some bits I had to do, or at least one command I had to do out of Linux from Scratch 5.0 to um, bring something in line with 4.0 to make it work um, with those boot scripts. But as I say, eventually I got it so it was working. Uh, more as correctly as I, I can remember. So um, that's worth just pointing out in case you're wondering why that hasn't gone. Normally it goes, I think, after you've created the password, is it, or the group configuration file. So don't get too worried about that. So it suggests that we ensure that everything in static is owned by the root for the reasons it says there. So let's do that. Creating directories. So we can copy this all in as one go. Normally I don't recommend this. A, because you want to learn and see what each command does. Um, uh, well, A, because you want to learn what each one does. And, and B, you want to see the output of each command and make sure there's no errors. But they've chain these all together so in theory because there's no minus v switches set against these there shouldn't be any output if everything's worked correctly which as you can see there isn't any output at all so we can assume that those have worked correctly now there's uh, actually two things here i haven't done this on the Linux from scratch one um, maybe it is something we should do is to change the permissions of the root directory, the root home directory. But in particular, you'll see that this was missing from Linux Scratch 1.0 as well to 
make the temp directory accessible by everybody um, to read, but only to make the uh, write accessible by the owner of the files. So, um, yeah, as you can see here, that um, it, it allows every, anybody to write to the directory, as I've said, and also um, to only allow people who've created files there to delete the files that they've created and nobody else. Um, okay, yeah, it does say here, I think Linux and Scratch is under the same sort of instructions that the sources go in user source. Well, I've just got used over years to putting them in sources because that's what the uh, more recent um, Linux Scratches use. It doesn't really matter as long as you're aware of where they are. I don't think there's any instructions that explicitly mention user source. So... That's that. So we need to mount a directory again. This is something that's not done in 1.0, but you can see the start of having to load the virtual file systems in the modern Linux and Scratches. We load about four or five, I think, off the top of my head. So at this time, we're only loading proc. Um, so it says, yeah, we can't, it can't find it in FS tab. Well, we haven't got an FS tab at the moment, so we can ignore that. If we do a df minus h, no, no, it's not there. Let's look at the proc. You can see the stuff in proc, so we can see that we have actually um, mounted the virtual file system. Uh, we need to create a symlink to m tab. So that's done to keep a track of the mounted directories, and we need to create a link from the static bash to bin bash so that's available for programs and also to create the sh um, binary as well well it's actually a link because some packages need those as part of the build so root the root name needs to be recognized so we need to create a password file and a group file as well so that's that done, so we can just check them. There's the password and the group file as well. So creating devices, so at this point in time, devices are still real files on the system, or nodes rather, uh, created using MakeNod. Um, so luckily the well, unluckily, this is a script that creates these, and rather than create this from hand, uh, fortunately, the, there's a script called makedev-1.7, which um, is luckily also the same version as uh, the Linux 5.0. So you can see that there is a makedev-1.0. So all I did was this is just said, uh, sorry, bz cat, bz cat, make def. If we be unzip this because it's not a tarball, it will just unzip it. And we won't have the archive anymore. So what I'm doing is um, expanding it, and I'm just going to redirect the output to make dev. So that we've, we should now have a file there called make dev there it is there you can see it's 33 kilobytes um okay we haven't got a vim now have we because we haven't built it no so let me do i don't suppose we've got less either have we no okay so i'll just have to do a cat uh, we've got more actually no So if we try and look back through here, you can see that well, there's several um, yeah, there's quite a bit to this. Um, I don't think I could have built this by hand. I could maybe have found one from another distribution. That's possible. Um, but you see it's more than just a load of make nod commands. 
Uh, it's quite complex, so it's handy that that is still around for LFS 5.0. Um, yeah, it says unpacking doesn't create a directory, just a file. Um, prepare the creation. So I've just redirected to the make file. So it's called make, sorry, make dev file. It's called make dev dash, uh, sorry, just make dev I've called it. So all we need to do is to, we'll have to modify this, is to copy the make dev into the dev directory. So let's check that's there. Okay, there it is there. And that PTS, by the way, we've just created that when we created the initial subdirectories. So now we've got to change into the dev and change permissions of it. And then we create some generic devices. Um, there's two options here. So it says if you aren't sure, it's best to use the make dev generic command as this will ensure you have all the devices you need. If you, but if you're gonna, if you're certain you're gonna use dev PTS, the other commands skips creating a set of devices you won't need. Well, I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna run the, um, sorry, yeah, I'll run the generic as I'm not really sure whether dev PTS is going to be used or not. And I don't want to skip them uh, being created. So let's run that. And you can see it's running through creating uh, a load of device nodes. And it says here that, in fact, well, an example of why the UDEV system is currently a lot better than this current use is a lot better than this script. Um, it creates HDA to HDH, so that's uh, eight hard disks by default, each with a maximum of 20 partitions. Um, so it's unnecessarily creating files for the majority of systems. I mean, this system's only got two disks in it and currently up to the seventh partition. Um, but clearly the, the remainder HDC, well, it's got it's got a CD-ROM actually, so that would be used. But HDD onwards are just wasted and certainly all the partition numbering, uh, especially for CD-ROM, is just pointless. So you can see why UDEV is quite a good idea. It just creates what it finds the system has got. So that is make dev done. So I'm just going to go back to sources. I'll tidy up that script. There's a copy of it left in the dev in case it needs to be rerun again for some reason. There might be other options to create other nodes that haven't been created now or maybe more nodes of the same type or similar type. So I'll leave that there. So we're now going to move on to the Linux headers. So we need to extract the Linux tarball. So if you remember, we've now got a tar which recognizes a J switch. So I'm going to use that now to extract this tarball. And you can see it's worked straight away there. So it's just a bit of convenience. So this is quite a big package, it's going to take a, a while to extract.
Okay, that's done. Let's change into it. And then we can copy and paste all these commands in to create the headers. And there's just some information about the, why they're copied and rather than sim linked. So that's done. So it's quicker to create them than it was to extract the package. Okay, so now we're on to man pages. So let's have a look at this. This is a BZ2. Okay, this is just one command, make install. And that's done. And we move on to glibc now. 